So for us at Dayon, authentication represents a collection of capabilities, which you know brings forward various biometric algorithms. Um, these components of authentication include an authentication server component, a set of SDKs for client-side connectivity and enablement, um, and a voice gateway specifically to facilitate voice authentication as part of our contact center solution. So uh, we'll address all of these facets um, a bit later in the presentation. Uh, we are we are going to have a battle of the biometrics. Well, we'll get into uh, like the 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 key of um, this, but uh, there's no there's no winners and losers here in some ways. Really, we're looking at kind of the pros and cons of, of each of the biometrics. And 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 as Nilesh, you just ran through some of the uh, trusted brands in this you know brands and enterprises around the world are, are looking at authentication factors to really uh, make sure that they provide secure you know per personalized trusted uh, customer service. So uh, there are challenges with 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 uh, traditional authentication, and and Matt Matt's going to go through that. I mean, we we've been covering this for for a number of years now, and and there are a lot of you know, um, we, we've been hearing about passwords going away for, for many, many years now, but still there's 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 um, some traditional challenges to uh, providing that that uh, authentication method to customers. Um, and we'll and we'll look into the kind of the, the today's modern authentication factors. What what can AI, what can machine learning, what, what are the kind of new technologies that are that uh, that Michael talked about initially when in the introduction about how can those be incorporated into factors today uh, to provide that that secure um, and, and authentication method. And then we'll, we'll look, you know, we'll, we'll bring it down to the real world. We'll talk about how you can use the right factor and the right use case. And, and really that's what it, what it comes down to is kind of looking at the feasibility uh, um, of, of some of these methods and really how it works and when it works. And, um, and we'll provide some, some context and some, um, some information about how to do that. The challenges of usability and challenges of human memory are such that custom, it just causes huge amounts of frustration uh, for customers, and that's that's when they that's when they can get it right. Uh, my, my my wife would normally be sitting uh, behind me right now and guarantee kind of maybe two or three times a day some service is going to ask her for a password, which is one of those seven or eight. I'm sure she's rotating around, and then it'll be curses and swe swearing because she can't quite remember which one it is for that service. And it just creates this huge kind of friction um, with what we're trying to create for our customers, which is seamless customer experiences where we know who they are, we're confident they are who they claim to be, uh, and we can get on and deliver that service. So right at the start of trying to deliver that service, we're creating some really frustrating um, experiences uh, for customers. Uh, on the other side of that, the flip side of that though, is it's also pretty expensive for us as enterprises to maintain all of the infrastructure associated with um, knowledge-based authentication. Um, many times uh, people forget those passwords, they forget their usernames, uh, and we have to send ourselves into a long, uh, drawn out and in incre increasingly more frustrating um, reset and reprovisioning process. Sometimes that involves sending stuff out, sometimes that involves going to a physical um, branch, sometimes that involves phoning people up. It all comes with cost and complexity, often hidden behind what should be quite a simple process of remembering your password. Uh, one in 20 breached passwords last year were one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, there was just so so much compromise goes on um, at the when when humans are involved that actually these processes are not delivering significant amounts of um, security. We're absolutely in the middle of an AI and machine learning revolution, which you know thankfully for us is also you know propelling the biometric algorithms uh, forward. So, you know, while we've always used kind of machine learning in our algorithms here, here in Dayon, you know, recent advancements in, in AI have, have you know, provided accuracy that, that wasn't previously possible. So we've, we, we, we've, we've great accuracy now, and it's due to a few, uh, you know, a couple of things we could quickly talk about. Um, big data, you know, these, these deep learning algorithms, they require a lot of data. And there's some, you know, there's some huge uh, uh, biometric data sets available now, which is great. Uh, and, and this has all kind of happened because we have this kind of widespread capture and sharing of, um, you know, using, using you know, everyone has a camera in their smartphone and there's microphones on, on everyone's personal devices. So there's more data than ever. And we really, you know, the biometrics uh, algorithms uh, and industry has, has benefited from that. Also compute power, you know, GPUs, so that the computational power of the GPU hardware used to train these algorithms has improved massively. So there's there's clouds full of GPUs. You can set up your own GPU rigs. 
you have more compute power which is needed to train the, the, these neural networks uh, available than, than ever before. Face algorithms, they, they use features of the face, including the, the appearance, the texture, uh, the geometry. Um, they often rely on finding, um, you know, finding the eyes, detecting the eyes, or detecting uh, facial landmarks. Um, mm -hmm. the, the, you know, the deep neural networks, um, they, they, they're trained, they learn, they learn from, from, from all the data you, you give them, but they learn to place more importance on areas of the face which change the least over time. So the most stable areas of the face, such as kind of the, the periocular region around the eyes, this is where the, the least change occurs because other parts, you know, your, your hair is growing or receding or you're growing a beard and, and there's other things which can interfere. But So the algorithms are learning to, to place importance on, on certain areas of the face. So your speech pattern depends not only on the kind of the, the physical shape of your of your vocal tract, but also your accent. You know, in London or Dublin or the US or wherever. But and, and your use of language, how you how you how you say certain words, your dialect, that sort of thing. Um, and it's it's again we're back to you know it's voice neural networks that learn how to extract the kind of the unique signal um, which is specific to it to it to a person's speech. Um, interestingly, actually, with voice, a, a lot of the algorithms now represent this audio. Uh, as an image. So they convert it into a spectrogram and they're using neural networks which are good at recognizing image patterns. So you're able to, able to take all these advancements in object recognition and face recognition and start to use some of that or reuse some of the, some of those um, uh, you know, really good image pattern matching uh, networks, neural networks uh, for voice. We're now walking yeah. around with these incredibly powerful computers in our pockets um and they're they're capable of some some amazing things and, it, and but if you think about the the social aspects of it like if someone walks up to you in the street and asks you asks for your phone there's not a chance you're going to give it to them um if someone um if you lose your phone you're more likely to notice you've lost your phone than your children sometimes <laughs> um so it, it provides a very secure um fact that possession um use case provides a very secure um way of authenticating people um, I, I think it's just it's really really interesting how different organizations have used different methods and we kind of seem to be converging on a few kind of common patterns now like uh Nilesh said about the kind of embedding the cryptographic token on the on the device as a means of authentication and then probably the final bit and, and maybe i should have said this first is is about desirable and about Despite all of these advances in um, the, the power and the sophistication of the technology, ultimately it's humans who have to use it. Uh, and um, the usability and acceptance of some of these technologies is, is some of the things that's actually held it, potentially held it back over time. It's this concept of identity continuity. Um, and this is where the Identity X platform truly shines. So we understand that there are many other vendors out there that might fulfill one or two of the items you see on screen. Um, but at Dan, we pride ourselves in both the depth and the breadth of our solution. So we provide not only the best of breed algorithms, features, and configurability, um, but also the breadth of solution to manage your customers throughout their life cycle.